Hey guys, it's Brett. Thanks for dropping by my channel. So today I wanted to give my March wrap up 12 books I read, uh, a lot of really good ones. So stick around. All right, so before we start to go over the 12, I wanted to, like I always do, talk about what I'm currently reading now. The first is Margot's Got Money Troubles by Ruby Thorpe. And thank you to William Morrow for this copy. Uh, this is slated to come out June 11th. Um, it's already been optioned. David E. Kelly is adapting this for uh, a streamer to st and Elle Fanning is going to be starring as Margot. Um, this is about a woman who, uh, very young, gets pregnant from her college professor, decides to keep the baby and finds herself in financial straits. So ends up starting an OnlyFans page and what happens. It's really good, really smart, really, really funny. I think you're going to probably hear a lot about this book, but June 11th. The other thing that I am almost finished with, I've been listening to this on audio, is Witness by Jamal Brinkley. Jamel, sorry, Jamel Brinkley. Um, this is one of the books that is shortlisted for the Aspen Words Prize. It is a collection of short stories. They are fantastic. I've never read anything from him before. I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I think I have three more stories left, but really, really, really good. All right, so on to the 12. First up, uh, this is not the final cover, obviously, The Husbands by Holly Gramazio. This was just chosen today, which is Tuesday the 2nd, um, as Jenna's book club pick for the month. There, that's probably a better rep what it is. The Husbands. This is about a woman who comes home from a bachelorette party one night to find a man in her home that she has no idea who he is and how he got there who is claiming to be her husband. When she opens her phone, she suddenly sees her photos are full of pictures with him. She doesn't know when this happened. Well, it turns out that she has kind of a magical attic and it is producing a steady stream of husbands. She sends one up, another one comes back down. It is kind of a uh, fantasy contemporary take on the swipe right, on speed dating, but there are small things that happen as each man comes down that changes the tenor of her home, her relationship with her friends. Some friends change more significantly depending on the husband that comes down. And she continues to age while this is happening because it doesn't take place in like two weeks. It goes over time. So it's a lot of fun. I almost thought in the beginning it was becoming so repetitious and you can imagine as one husband after another comes down. But then she does a spin, which I thought was great. And I thought that the book was headed in one direction, but then she turns it on its head again by introducing another different husband that's quite different. So ultimately it, it, it became more for me than what I thought it was going to be. And I thought I had it all figured out. Um, and I found it really enjoyable. So uh, it's out now. All right. Um, one of the books from the Women's Prize long list this year, The Ren, The Ren by Anne Enright. I had never read any Anne Enright, but, um, you know, me and all my love for all things Irish. This is about uh, the focal point of this book is two women, a mother and daughter. Um, and also the mother's father who is really kind of a secondary figure in this, but looms very large, who was an extremely celebrated poet who has passed away. But the thing about him is um, when his daughter's mother was very sick with cancer, he abandoned um, the mother and her two girls. Mm -hmm. The granddaughter, who was the other girl in the story, never knew her grandfather, obviously, because he was gone. So it's a really interesting story of one, how the daughter, uh, what her life became, and then subsequently her daughter, what her life is, and the way she lives her life, meaning the granddaughter, um, is almost much more of a free spirit closer to her grandfather. But it also brings up the whole idea of artists and brilliant artists doing terrible things and the idea of that and the public's perception of 
who this man was, yet this family knowing what he really was. It's beautifully written. It's very insightful. Uh, I I really liked it, and um, I'll be interested to see if it makes a short list. And I can't tell yet because I haven't read enough of the books if this would absolutely be a short list book for me, but I've only read five of the books so far, but it's it's definitely a good one. All right, Loot by Tanya James. This was on a ton of different lists last year, and I could see why this was recommended um, from a friend of mine on Bookstagram as part of my um, 12 books recommended by 12 friends. I thought this was great. It is a high story. It is an adventure story. It is about colonialism. It starts in 18th century India and a young boy um, who is a very talented uh, woodworker who gets um, uh, employed by the Sultan to create uh, an automaton. I hope I'm putting my emphasis on the wrong syllable um, of a tiger for the Sultan's uh, kid. That um Automaton, you can actually look up and it, it does exist of the tiger, but it's so good and um, engaging characters, really funny. Um, I just thought it was terrific. Okay, How to End a Love Story by Yulin Kwong. I am not a romance reader. I love a rom com movie, or I should say, I did. I don't know that uh, any of these new ones I've gone to see, but like, give me an old Julia Roberts film, give me an old Meg Ryan film. I am so there. Um, this is really smart, though. Um, what Yulin Kwong does is she, her trope, it's not even a trope, what she does is she sets the story up by 13 years ago. This guy, Grant, who is like the homecoming king, popular, good looking. And this girl, Helen, who is much more bookish. She was kind of the yearbook editor, that kind of girl. Um, Helen's sister commits suicide by walking into traffic one evening. And Grant's car is the car that hits and kills her. So it creates, as you could imagine, a kind of huge rift between Grant and her family. 13 years later, uh, Helen has written a book that is being adapted into a TV series and Grant is the head writer. And so they come back together. So there's a lot going on here aside from just a will they or won't they. You know, it deals a lot with settling things in your past, who you were in your past. Also relationships with family and parents as well as sibling relationships. So um, I'm not going to say it reinvents the wheel. That's not what I'm saying. But for somebody like me who's not traditionally a rom-com or a romance reader, uh, this was one that I could do. And if that's you... This could be something that would be, a, at the very least, a good beach read. So, oh, and um, I should say thank you to Atria for this. Um, this comes out April 9th, so we're right on it. All right, I had spoken about this in my last video, Sociopath by Patrick Gagne. Um, and I think this time now I'm pronouncing her name correctly. Uh, this was so, so, so fascinating, you guys. Um, as I said before, Patrick knew from a very young age that there was something off about her, as did her classmates, as did her mother. So, but it wasn't really until she got to college and was taking a psychology course and psychopathy and uh, sociopathy came up that she checked all the boxes for sociopathy and understood truly what was wrong with her. Um, I don't want to say too much aside to say, I found this riveting. She sets out then to get her psychiatry degree to be able to help other people who are also di diagnosed with sociopathy to live full and fulfilling lives, um, find themselves to be able to find mates, to be able to have families, all of which she does. She is married. She has two children. Uh, but it's a really interesting look into sociopathy firsthand. Um, some of it reads almost like a thriller, but also the technical parts of it in terms of the psychiatry and the, and the actual um, diagnosis. She presents it in a way that it's never um, didactic. It doesn't feel dry and like you're reading, you know, um, some kind of 
medical jargon. It's not that. It's it's very highly digestible. So I I would highly encourage this. I really 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 liked it, and I I feel like you're going to hear a lot about this. It came out today, the uh, Tuesday the second. Oh, and uh, thank you to Simon and Schuster for that. All right, ours by Philip B. Williams. This monster. Um, Here's what I'm going to say. I really, really, ultimately, really liked this. I'm really glad I read it. I am really grateful to have read this with a group of people because, and I will say to you, if this book interests you, it really benefits from that. It is um, about a woman named Saint who gathers together a group of slaves by killing off their owners and their masters on various plantations. She creates a town called Ours that she puts a spell around it so no one can even find the town. No one can get in um, unless their intentions are pure and, and good. But anyone who would be thinking of harming anyone or anything like that, they would not get in. It is vast. It is a vast cast in it. I, I actually kept a pad where I wrote everyone down because each of them, and Philip B. Williams has said in his afterwards, which if you read this, I would almost read his afterword before you read the book because I found it very informative. But he said to him, this, this cast is a canvas. There's not one quote unquote lead character. They all have their stories and they really do. She's he's playing with so much here in terms of uh, history, in terms of gender, in terms of um, just slavery and what it means to be free. There's a lot of magical realism in this book. Almost at times I was like almost overwhelmed by it because I thought it wasn't what I thought. I thought it was going to have um, its origins in that and spark, but it's really prevalent. So if that's something you have a problem with, you might want to steer clear. But I will say, Philip B. Williams, being a poet first, can craft some of the most exquisite sentences. And uniformly with our group, three quarters of the way through the book, it's specifically, if you read it, chapter 27 is so mind-blowingly phenomenal. Um, again, I, I really, really, really liked this. I can't wait to see what he does next. Um, it's it's truly a feat of storytelling and imagination. Um, and it's not like anything I've read in a long time. So, uh, Housemates by Emma Copley Eisenberg. And thank you to Hogarth for this. This is a debut novel. Now, she has written another, another nonfiction book. So I should say this is a debut fiction novel. I couldn't believe it. Um, it is so self-assured. It's such great writing. It's about um, a, a group of housemates, the two central ones in this book. It's a group of lesbians. Um, one of them is a photographer who, um, while at university, comes under the tutelage of her professor who's brilliant and, and takes her under his wing and kind of uh, really kind of um, shows her who he is, but also what she can be and her potential. Um, years later, he, two things, he is uh, accused of me tooing and gets caught up in that, but then he ends up dying. This is all kind of backstory. Um, and in his will leaves her his estate and all his photographs. So she sets out with one of the other women in the house who is a writer and they, and she kind of makes the decision that, well, she'll write about this and the other woman will, you know, take photographs. And what happens? Um, it's so good, you guys. It, I, first of all, I was so captured by these two characters, these two women, their kind of messiness, their faults, their desires, all of it. I, I was completely here for it um, and, and just loved spending time with them. So really enjoyed All the World Beside by Gerald Conley. Um, and thank you to Riverhead, I believe. Yes, and thank you to Riverhead Books for this. Um, 
my pod partner Jason described this perfectly when he said this is the Scarlet Letter meets Grace and Frankie. <laughs> um, and that's kind of it. Uh, this is um, set in Massachusetts, Puritan, Massachusetts, really think the Scarlet Letter, but um, a minister in the town, he and his wife, and they have it. They have um, two children, and he gets involved with one of the men in town. It's really fascinating, and what's even more fascinating than the two men are the two wives of these men and their relationship that develops. Uh, that is incredible. It is a really interesting timepiece. It's interesting how, you know, how much religion and God is at front and center of everything, what that does to this town, how it affects the children, how these children are growing up and what their knowledge is about situations. Um, repression, I really, I really, really like this. Really interesting. Um, Cinema Love by Jimin Tang. Oh my God. Again, another debut. I thought this was so fantastic. I blew through this thing. Um, first of all, thank you to Dutton for this. Um, I'm trying to look on here. Oh, this comes out May 7th. This is so fascinating. It's set, it starts in China and there is a movie theater in China where men go to hook up with other men. Um, the woman who's kind of the ticket taker for the theater knows what's going on and she's having a relationship with the projectionist, but he doesn't really understand what's going on, that these men are meeting to hook up, right? But most of the men that are coming to this theater are married. Now, I thought it was going to be really about the men and their relationships and, you know, whatever. It's not. It's about the wives. And, oh my gosh, you guys, it is so good. Um, eventually, the narrative moves to America and these characters who move to America. It's a very small cast of characters. It is so well written it is so compelling these characters are so interesting um heartbreaking i i just thought it was so beautiful and it completely i love when you think the book is going to be one thing and it's completely another and that's absolutely what this was also i think this is such a fantastic cover i love it so much but um definitely check this out it's it's really 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 interesting um, just really well crafted. So next up is, um, Colin Barrett's Wild Houses. I'm, I don't actually have a copy of it cause I, I read this on my Kindle. Um, again, Irish. So I was already predisposed to like it. This is also a debut novel. Um, this was, Colin is one of these writers that granted did the list of, you know, 10 new authors to look out for, and he was one of them. <clears throat> this is, the best way I can describe it quickly for you, it feels like an episode of Fargo, where it's a, um, you know, poor Irish town, uh, and this young um, kid who's kind of tough, um, who's with his girlfriend and one night gets kidnapped by a group of men because his brother owes um, these guys money. And so they're holding him for ransom. And the book really kind of plays out in 48 hours. And it, and it's what happens. Uh, it's great. It's very Irish. You know, 
in every way where it's violent you know it 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 has that whole undercurrent it almost feels like something again that quentin tarantino could have done I, my only beef with the novel is it was propelling itself to where i thought it was going and it kind of went like beep so and i wanted it to be more like boom which is where i thought it was going to go so the ending didn't completely stick the landing for me that said um i still thought it was really well written. It, uh, he had extremely well drawn and compelling characters, and I'm certainly gonna get anything else that Colin Barrett writes. I want to check out. So, all right. Um, Enter Ghost by Isabella Hamad. This is uh, also up on the shortlist for the Aspen Words Prize. I did not read her first book. Um, which was the Parisian. I thought this was fantastic. This is about a um, Palestinian woman who has been living in London, who returns home to her family's home in uh, Israel. And she gets pulled in, she's an actress, and she gets pulled into a production of Hamlet that is going to be done by a Palestinian theater troupe and it's going to tour through the West Bank in Gaza. And of course, with all of the tensions and what's going on, um, this clearly precedes the events of, you know, October 7th and then subsequently everything else that's happened. But all of that, which has been going on in the West Bank, um, it's really interesting. It's very enlightening very compelling um i also listen to this on audio and it is i would highly highly if you're an audiobook person recommend listening to this on audio she does an incredible job the the uh the narrator and i'm sorry i don't have her name for you but it's she's fantastic so uh, i thought this was great and finally um Wandering Stars by Tommy Orange. And thank you to Knopf for this beautiful finished copy. Um, as you can see, I tabbed it a lot. He was just on the Gaze Reading Podcast. This is both a prequel and a sequel to his previous and first book, There There, um, which um, you know was about an indigenous community and ended with gun violence at a powwow. The beginning of this book, takes place much earlier and takes some of the characters from there there and they're kind of their origin story and then it picks up in the second half where they're there ended um i liked this actually better than they're there they're there i liked and i liked it enough and i thought it was interesting but this i was completely caught up in um especially the beginning part um, the kind of historical elements of the book, the ideas of generational trauma um, and trying to kind of find your way in the world, but especially for this indigenous community and these characters. I thought it was so well done. I thought it was absolutely beautiful. His writing is just top notch. He is such an interesting guy, Tommy Orange, and um, so uh, smart, well-spoken and just interesting um so i i absolutely love this um and would would highly recommend all right so there you go guys 12 books for march <laughs> let me know if you read any of these let me know if any of these look interesting to you um for the books that are not out yet i will put their dates below um of when they're going to be released so you can check them out um, as always, thank you for stopping by. If you've liked what you've seen today, please like and follow. Um, tell your friends. And I will see you next week with my April picks, which I just pulled today. So I'm very excited about that. All right. Thanks. I'll see you all later.